Julie's in Austin, Texas. Hi, Julie. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you so very much for taking my call. I'm a little nervous. No so trouble. Bear with me. <laughs> no trouble. Never lost a patient. How can we help? <laughs> um, is there an age where you consider people too old to get started? Um, my husband's about to hit 60. I'm about to hit 54. Um, he's really not very enthused about starting this program. Um, what things can I do to help us? And if need be, are there things that you ever recommend a wife can try to do on her own? Um, now, truth be told, my husband's distrustful of my financial desire. We got burned because of the decisions in the past that I promoted. And so um, he has reasons to be cautious. Um, so I'll just shut up and let you ask questions. What did you get burned on? Um, we sold stock that he inherited before Y2K that has grown hugely, of course, when we no longer owned it, right? Um, that portfolio would, have, would be huge now. We put emergency fund into way too small a home. That's a money sink. And then the bedroom addition that we put on ate up the emergency fund that we had back then. And okay, I'm sorry. Like I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Where was he when all these decisions were being made? Um, you made them by yourself without him? No. Um, so why are, why is it your fault? I, I think that he feels like in order to make me happy and or to keep the peace, he did things that he didn't feel good in his gut about. Um, okay. So his problem so, is not his problem is not your decisions. His problem is is that he needs to run down to Walmart and pick up a spine and stand up to you and stand no, up to you when no, you think no. you're doing something wrong. He's, he's a really fine and honorable man, and I I, I don't. No, he didn't. Want to he did not listen. No, I, I didn't question his honor or his, how fine he was. I said you said he didn't stand up to you when he knew you all were doing something wrong, and now he blames you. That's what you told uh, me. Didn't you? Um, I don't think I want to go there. Um, I feel like he's he's had to persist in a job that he hates for so long, and he's sacrificed so much that he's not looking maybe into an austerity program to help us kind of maybe make more progress. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, no, there is not a program that a wife can do without her husband that's going to do anything except cause problems. The people, all the data points we have of people who are able to build wealth and able to build financial stability all come from couples learning to work together and trust each other's wisdom. And Sharon and I disagree often. We're a couple of hillbillies. Disagreement <laughs> is a way of life. Okay? We, it's just it's how we process decisions. We have to fight about them sometimes, and we're fine with that. We're not mad about each other. We don't lose trust over it. But we mm -hmm. argue about paint color on the wall, for God's sakes. And so, um, but, but that's how we process decisions. But we don't, either one of us, move forward against the other one's will, and that has caused us to prosper. Okay. We can have a, we can have a discussion. We can have a passionate discussion. Um, you could call it a fight. We can have all of those things, but we're going to be in agreement before we move forward. And agreement is not one of us caving because the other one is ashamed that I've worked so hard or some other kind of crap like that. This is we're going to be two adults looking into the future, and we both feel good about the decisions, and we're going to make those decisions together. All the data points say that kind of a relationship is about the only situation that wealth is built in. Occasionally, someone makes so much stinking money they can overcome the toxic relationships in their life. But most of the time, the toxic relationships are a bigger deal breaker than income a bigger deal breaker than debt, a bigger deal breaker than other stuff. And so the two of you learning to respect each other, learning to work together, learning to communicate well, um, and, and not I'm going to give you a pass because you work a job you hate, not I'm not going to go there, not, yeah, we're going there, we're going there. And, um, uh, you know, if, if you were my little sister, and you are, I'm 58, so... Um, and he's old enough to be my, my slightly big brother, then, you know, I would just sit down with you and say, guys, your number one impediment to getting your financial act together is the way you deal with each other. You've got some toxic garbage going on in your relationship. Um, he let you do things he 
didn't think were good, and then he has the unmitigated gall to say he doesn't trust your financial decisions when he was involved in them. When you're involved in the decision, you don't get to say, I told you so. You lost that card. You don't get to play that card. And that's what's going on here. So uh, you guys can't work our stuff until you get your marriage stuff straightened out. So I would tell you to sit down with a good pastor and work on the stuff. And no, no one is ever too old. If you're breathing, you're not too old to get smarter. If you're breathing, you're not too old to get wiser. If you're breathing, you're not too old to do better at any given area of your life. As a matter of fact, the most vibrant old people you ever run into are the ones that are continual learners. They're always trying something new. They're adventurous. Um, they're not stuck. They're not sitting on their recliner waiting to die. And so um, these are the best and the coolest old people you ever run into. Be one of those. That's what we all want to be, I think. Uh, sometimes it's hard to do. But so you guys have an adventure ahead of you. You've got a whole new chapter in your marriage that you need to discover. And then that'll lead you to some much better chapters in your financial world that you can discover. And that's what I hope for you.